Hey everyone, I'm Cameron from speedkeepshop.com and as you can see, I am surrounded by cubes. So if you didn't already tell from the video title, this is the new Diane Guhong Pro and there are a lot of different versions here. So we're gonna be diving into all of those, the features and all the nitty gritty stuff in just a little bit. But I do have to say that I was very pleasantly surprised by this release because I've been speed cubing since like 2006. And back in my day, the Diane cubes were by far the best, like the original Zanchi or John Chu or however you want to pronounce it, was by far the best cube you can get. And Diane, ever since the Tang Yun version one that came out a few years ago, really hasn't had a release that's been like that notable as far as like, okay, this could actually be a viable main cube for a majority of speed cubers. They've all been good in their own way, but not really that great. And I think that fortunately, the Diane Yu Hong Pro actually might be another contender for a competitive flagship. So the cube comes in a total of six versions. I only have four out here because there are three different sizes. We have 54 millimeter, 56 and 55, and each size comes in a standard screw spring core and then a maglev core to bring you to a total of six versions. It's a little bit excessive, but we'll find out if it really makes sense and is worth it a little bit later on. So the features across all the versions are pretty much the same. They all come with a magnetic core. You have the option of maglev or spring, as we just talked about, and you have a total of five compression settings, whether that be for the maglev distance of the magnetic rings or the spring compression. The customization system is fantastic. It's super easy to use. There's no tool required at all, and it doesn't hurt your fingers when you're actually trying to use it. It's easy to understand, and it's effective, and just <laughs> chef's kiss. I was actually a little bit surprised that this Diane Gu Hong is as durable as it is because out of the box, you know, they feel pretty flexible, which in my experience generally translates to lots of locking up and just not a whole lot of stability. But I think that's where the magnetic core comes into play and does assist with that kind of more tactile, stable feel because I have to say these things are feeling really durable, really easy to manage, and they don't really feel like cheap. I hate to throw Diana under the bus, but the Gu Hong version four, I believe it was, felt extremely hollow, clacky, and just felt like a cheap cube. It, it, it just was a, just not it. I always inadvertently scramble the cube mid video, so I'm just gonna set that there and pretend that you guys didn't notice that. The exterior of all of these is gonna be glossy, but not UV coated. So it looks great, but you do not have that extra grip. But if you do want that extra grip, you can add the PVC coating add-on on the product page at speedkeepshop.com. I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to the color schemes as well, and I have to say that it's a really nice contrast. The green and blue look really good. The yellow isn't too light, but it's also not too mustardy. And the red and orange are also a nice contrast. Easy to recognize, and you can even solve in low light without much trouble. The spring and maglev versions do feel significantly different. The maglev one, which I believe is this one, I'll know in just a second, it's a lot more buttery feeling. It's, it's more smooth, more quiet, just a lot more of what I enjoy. And I'm typically not a huge maglev fan. The spring version, however, is a lot more clacky, a lot louder as you can hear. It just feels very, very, very different. It's pretty loose and not quite as confidence inspiring as the maglev one is to use. But as you can see, I'm turning pretty sloppily and not really having too hard of a time with lockups. Um, whereas the maglev one is just a lot better flow for me. This is where these different sizes can really come into the field because this is the 54 millimeter cube, which is a tad bit too small for two-handed solving, but I know Jaden loves it for one-handed solving, which I do have to agree it is a really nice one-handed cube, but I'm not nearly as good as he is. It's weird going from the 54 to the 56, which is pretty much the standard size cube. 56 feels really big. The 55, I think is, Probably the winning size if you had to pick one out of the three. I think it's a good compromise between the two and I think is the one I would go with if I were having to purchase one. Diane's also following the trend of having these like internal piece designs. We've seen like teardrop, we've seen dragon scale, we've seen honeycomb, and Diane's is just sort of like wavy. At this point, I'm fully convinced that cubing manufacturers just like pick a random design and slap it onto a cube and see if it works. And the wavy one definitely works. It's very smooth, it helps distribute the lubricant, and it just 
feels really like non-intrusive. But again, I think it's a pretty, pretty minor difference in feel if I'm being completely honest. Again, all six versions uh, do have a moderate strength magnet, which paired with magnetic core has a very tactile clicky feel. It does feel on the stronger end of like the moderate scale. So it's probably like moderate to strong versus like moderate to weak, but it's really nice. It's not overly intrusive, you know, pretty much just right for how you'd want the magnets to feel. So touching back on the sound, as you guys heard earlier, the maglev version is a lot quieter than the spring. The spring one isn't obnoxious, but it is a lot louder. And I know that Diane kind of set the bar for quiet cubes with the Tang on version one. I will say that adding lubricant like Nebula does dampen the sound quite a bit. Do keep that in mind if you're buying the spring version and you want a quiet cube, you might want to reconsider, spend the extra few dollars and grab the maglev version. So as far as the setup goes, these things come absolutely soaked in like a cheap generic oil, which is kind of Diane's like MO at this point. I kind of miss the days of the DIY cubes when they didn't come soaked in, in lube, but like these things are excessive. So I highly recommend wiping um, at least like kind of like the main surface areas off with like a paper towel or a terry cloth towel. But if you really want to get um, into the nitty gritty, it is probably best to take the cube apart, wipe down the surfaces and then re-lube it. My personal favorite combo that I think you will all love is a combination of Martian and Lunar. And if you really want a fast, fast turning feel, put a few drops of Stardust in and buckle up. The Guhong Pro is very fast, but it's also controllable, which is generally not, you don't use those two things in the same sentence. It, it really surprises me how well I solve on this cube because if you look at this cube at face value uh, or on paper, it, it I shouldn't like it, but I do love this cube. And maybe part of it is the nostalgia and me wanting Diane to succeed and have another really popular three by three, but it's a really solid feeling cube. Um, corner cutting is 45 degrees, which I don't even know why we mentioned that at this point. If you're releasing a three by three at this point in 2023, it doesn't have 45 degree corner cutting. I'm looking at you, GAN 14. Like what, are you, like, what are you doing at that point? Reverse corner cutting is about line to line, which again, pretty standard. It does struggle a bit more with this, but the spring, that was the spring version. The maglev version is about the same. Reverse corner cutting does seem to be improved with the maglev version, but forward corner cutting is pretty much the same between the two. We touched on the flexibility of this cube earlier, which generally translates to lots of locking up. And yeah, the magnetic core does help a lot with that stability, but I am pretty surprised that given how loose this cube is, I don't really feel like I lock up that much. Just doing like like spamming, I don't know, like random turns or let me see, if I just start to kind of turn like sloppily, I mean, it's a pretty solid solving experience, honestly. And Again, I'm just really surprised that it isn't more like locky and catchy than, than it is. Not to say it doesn't catch or lock up at all. It, it does have its moments, but all in all, it's a really solid solving experience and I can flow really well with it when I get in the groove. So in the era of these crazy times where cubes are above $80 or $50, $40. The fact that these come in at $19.95 for the maglev and $16.95 for the spring version, I mean, that's the same for any size. These are a great value. Looking at cubes in the same price range, there aren't really that many to compare to that have the magnetic core and the maglev. And yeah, these don't have like adjustable magnets and stuff like that, like you'd find in the Tornado version three for about $5 more, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. And I think that at some point less is more and just going back to a more simple cube, I think is a, is a good thing every once in a while. And I think that the Diane Guhong Pro really does that well. We have the maglev as an option. We have the five um, compression settings and we have the magnetic core. And you know, you just you set your, your compression and you solve it and you forget about it. You're not gonna sit here tinkering with over 1,200 customization settings. You can just sit down, solve it and enjoy it. The one contender that did just pop up like completely unexpectedly is the Moyu RS 3M V5, which will have a version at a similar price point is these. So I will be kind of curious to see how that compares. So if you guys want to see that like Q battle slash comparison, leave a comment down below and we'll see what we can do. If you've watched this channel for a while, you would know that I'm not really a huge fan on cubes that have several different versions. I do think that the six different versions is a bit excessive, 
But if we take away the, the different sizes and just said that this came out in a 55 millimeter size with maglev and springs, I'd be okay with it. I am giving Diane a bit of a pass as far as the different sizes go because I suspect that they're kind of trying to gauge market research based on the sales of each size to see which one is most preferable and will hopefully just go with one size in the future, whether that be 54, 55, or 56 millimeters. If you're buying them all, I'm not gonna say don't do it because it supports my shop, but you're kind of messing up Diane's uh, strategy of figuring out what size is the most popular. As far as accessories go, I'm happy to inform that there are none, so you're not paying for these unnecessary things you're not gonna be using. Again, you can adjust the, the compression setting with your fingers, no tool to carry around and get lost, and again, amazing, love that. The literature is kind of, hit or miss. Diane is kind of notoriously known for having like really poorly translated guides. Um, there are a few little awkward misspellings in this one, but it gets the point across and it's such a simple to use compression system. So you don't really need it. And again, I'll give him a pass on that. Packaging is you can see you have different kind of color schemes across the three different sizes. It looks cool. It's a little bit bigger, but honestly, like relative to what the cube size is. Um, we are kind of coming back down to earth. Jaden, if you can throw on screen the Chi Mamba V3, that thing was like, the box was like that big and the cube was a cube size and it was very excessive and very weird. So I'm kind of happy that we're kind of like scaling down the packaging a little bit across the board because it only makes things more expensive for me and for you guys as the consumer. So you'll probably keep it and then throw it away a year later and wonder why did I even keep this? So for my final thoughts, I think that I am gonna be using the Guhong Pro as my main for a little bit. I really enjoy it. It's a super just nostalgic cube for me. It feels great. I enjoy solving on it. I know Jaden loves the 54 millimeter for one-handed solving as we touched on. So he's been kind of spamming solves on that. Honestly, I'm just really happy to see that Diane is sort of back in the mix as far as being considered for like viable three by threes. Cause again, I don't think that really any other recent Diane release would even contend with Mo Yuchi and Gan, at least in my opinion. But if you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below and always happy to have that discussion. With that being said, I think that's the end of the video. It's good to be back. Had to come back for the Diane, couldn't let Jaden do this one. And let me know, are you guys gonna be picking this up? Do you already have one? And if so, what do you think? Thanks for supporting the shop. See you all in the next video. Bye.